Welcome to the Forest Inventory Development video produced by the Resource Assessment Program of the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Division of Forestry. In this video we will review the high-level process of developing stand-level inventory from remotely sensed data and field collected data. This includes what is LiDAR, derived products from LiDAR, how these derived products are used to model forest inventory, and how resource assessment is creating stand-level inventory using these methods. LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, is an active form of remote sensing in which a laser is emitted from an instrument and the time between when the laser is pulsed to when it is returned is recorded. While these instruments can be attached to many platforms, attaching them to aircraft allows for a large area to be covered. The resulting data, which is referred to as point cloud data, provides a 3D representation of the surface below, based on the time it took between when the laser was pulsed and when the signal was returned. In the point cloud data being viewed, we see a forested area which is colored by elevation, with redder objects representing taller features. In addition to the trees, we can also see roads and other structures as well. Here we see a shared geo-developed Poetry Viewer. Poetry is a free, open-source, web-based point cloud renderer for large point clouds. Point cloud data can be combined with other types of data, such as photography. Here the point cloud is colored with the imagery providing a 3D image of the forest below. There are many open-source and browser-based tools which are readily available and provide access to all levels of users, unlocking incredible potential to familiarize oneself with this increasingly important data type. Here the point cloud data reveals a highly heterogeneous landscape in which there are many different types of forests coming together as well as tree sizes and past treatment types. Field data collection is paramount to the development of forest inventory models. To develop models, a known area of forest with detailed measurements is necessary to reflect the conditions present. This process was detailed in a previous video. The data collected can now be viewed as it is submitted in the Resource Assessment Dashboard, which is currently live and available to view by persons with an MNDNR account and the proper permissions. The dashboard allows for a number of options of viewing, including overall numbers of plots collected, by whom, as well as some other metrics, such as the total number of individual trees measured, just to name a few. Each blue dot represents a point on the ground with the plot center recorded by a GPS device capable of sub-meter accuracy. The full scope of functionality is beyond the scope of this video. Suffice to say that Survey123 has made data gathering easier than ever with the dashboard providing near real-time information as plots are submitted. In the forest modeling process, we are taking data from which we have gathered a sample, i.e. the forest structural and condition metrics on the ground, and relating them to remotely sensed data we have everywhere. First, however, we need to develop metrics from the remote sensing data, also referred to as point cloud derived products. Grid metrics are one example of point cloud derived products and are a descriptive statistic of the LiDAR dataset which resource assessment produces as a series of pixels technically called a raster. To produce grid metrics, there are a number of open source software options with libraries and packages available to produce grid metrics including R, Python, and Fusion, which was developed by the US Forest Service. There are hundreds of potential descriptive statistic rasters we could derive, examples include average point elevation, the standard deviation of the point elevation, median point elevation, and that's just to name a few. To create a data set to model the forest structural metrics to remotely sense metrics, the GPS locations gathered by foresters are used to extract the LiDAR metrics at that specific location based on the area of the plot size in the sample. For PBI, this is a one-tenth acre area. In the current clips, a remote sensing scientist is using Fusion software to extract LiDAR metrics at that specific location. Because we are extracting and relating data at a specific location, gathering accurate and precise spatial location data is essential. During this extraction, as previously mentioned, hundreds of potential descriptive statistics for the LiDAR data are extracted for that particular location. The more error we have in our location data, 
means more error in downstream processes such as modeling due to spatial mismatch between the remote sensing data and the field measured data. In the current clip, we can see the LiDAR point cloud clipped to one particular plot. Once the LiDAR metrics for a plot are extracted, a data set can be compiled. In this case, the blue columns represent LiDAR-derived metrics for the plot, and the green columns show forest inventory metrics gathered at the same plot. In this stage, analysts will often look at the relationship between LiDAR and field metrics and do further pre-model evaluations. Given the size of these data sets, using programming is an effective way to scale the modeling effort. It is important to note that new modeling techniques and breakthroughs are always being developed. Currently, resource assessment scientists conduct their modeling in two steps. The first is leveraging a machine learning algorithm known as Random Forest, in which hundreds or even thousands of decision trees are produced. The Random Forest model allows the analyst to quickly discern which LiDAR metrics contributed most to prediction of the forest metric of interest. Once the most important LiDAR metrics are determined, resource assessment scientists move on to the second part, which is developing a multiple regression model using the metrics of most importance found in the random forest step. The programming environment allows us to take the regression coefficients developed and apply them to a group of raster data. Here, analysts take groups of rasters and layer them, also referred to as stacking. The model can then be applied to this stack and forest metric predictions are made across the area for which we have those metrics available. Estimates for smaller areas can be derived by taking a metric of interest and using polygons, which represent any spatial condition, such as a watershed or stand shape, just for example, and then the raster values underneath can be evaluated and statistics computed, such as an average, or standard deviation or other by using a tool found in ArcMap such as Zonal Statistics, but similar algorithms are available in other programs as well. This technique can then be repeated for each forest metric, and the results compiled into an estimate of the inventory for that particular polygon, again, such as a stand boundary. While the resource assessment program uses LiDAR for structural and some condition estimates, Resource assessment also assesses cover type based on spectral imagery available from Landsat, Sentinel, NAEP, and other spectral imagery sources. This procedure leverages Google Earth Engine and the random forest algorithm previously discussed. PBI plots are leveraged here along with other data sources to create the necessary data set to make predictions of forest and non-forest cover types. Once the raster is developed, similar techniques previously discussed can be used to extract the information. Resource Assessment is working with MNIT to integrate the final stand level data into the new Fortree system, as well as make the spatial data products available to foresters through Fortree's base maps. This is ongoing work currently being conducted. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of the PBI modeling process for forest inventory. If you have questions or want to know more, please contact Resource Assessment.